Now it's time to polish this monster morganite. I'm Steve Moriarty from moregems.com and this is the project I've taken on. Uh, this uh, was a 744 carat uh, morganite and we're hoping to hit somewhere 250 to 300 carat. It's going well so far. Um, I've pre-polished this with uh, my 600 uh, lightning lap um, which many of you might think it's uh, crazy going from a 600 lightning lap to polish. Um, but, you know, I've polished a couple rows of this and I'm finding it takes me about three and a half minutes to polish a facet. These are big facets. Um, if I'd have pre-polished with a, a much, gone to 3000 grit, how long would it have taken me to do that extra step and then polish? I'm debating whether there's much difference at all. Three and a half minutes to polish a facet um, and skipping an entire step of cutting. Um, debatable, but uh, I'm sure many of you that have cut for a long time would say, well, you should go to a further pre-polish, but uh, I've skipped it for all my time in business and I'll continue to do it. And uh, I don't know how much time I lost, but uh, the polish is coming out great. And now I'm going to show you just what it takes to polish this stone. So I've changed to the bat lap. The bat lap is a proprietary tin mixture that is harder than tin and produces a very flat facet. Um, to polish, we're using, uh, I'm using 50,000 grit diamond. And WD-40. So how you charge the lap is you spray some WD-40 on a Kleenex. And like I said, uh, probably best to buy Kleenex without the um, lotion in it. Uh, you don't need to mix up too many things into the to the mix here. And just wipe this down real well. You can see what's left from the last facet I was polishing. And then we're going to charge it. You know, get a little of the WD-40 on your finger. Kind of touch it in there. Spread it across and spread it really well. Now how much you put on this is a little dependent on the stone you're cutting. I find morganite is uh, a little more resistant to scratching than like tanzanite. Tanzanite I find I have to put a very little amount on it or it will scratch. If you get too much on the lap, you're gonna cause scratching. Um, so if, if you are scratching, just clean it off again and put less on there. Um, there's uh, a point where it's too much and there's a point where it's too little. Uh, if you find it's polishing way too slow, then, then you add a little more to it. So that's pretty much all there is to charging it. And then we find uh, the facet we want to polish. Just touch it down a little bit. Look to see where it's faceting or where it's polishing. I'm a little bit to the left, so I'm going to cheat it over right a little bit. That sounds like I'm a little too far right, which I am. And sounds can tell you just how it's going. I can tell that's closer, but still right. And that sounds better. These are large facets, so they take quite a bit of time to polish. And if you look at it, you can see I'm pretty much hitting pretty far to the right over here. 
So I've got to cheat it to the left. Again, the bigger the facet, the easier it is to be not on it directly. And now we can get rid of our visor. It's no longer useful because we really need to see up close on this. You know, getting the light in the correct place, you know, where you want to try and see this facet is somewhere between where it gets light and dark, the reflection of the light when it's bright it's hard to see but somewhere when it goes from light to dark is kind of where you can see the polish best we're looking for scratches we're looking for at the edges and see if it's uh, polished all the way to the edge and I've got a little area down in the corner that I need to get to. So I'm going to go cheat it a little bit left and go down just a little bit. So as you can see, as Michael's moving the, the camera, you can see that idea of light to dark. And you know, when it's just into the dark there, that's typically where you're gonna see the, the facet the best. You're looking for scratches, you're looking for little teeny dots. Uh, that would mean you just haven't gone far enough. So one thing I've found, when you're polishing, if you find a little waviness to it, which is typically caused by some spot in the lap, if you move it across much faster, it will smooth that out. It's not something that works well on quartz when you get uh, um, orange peel, uh, but but little lines that run across that little wavy issue wavy issues um, moving it fast across the lap will often get rid of that problem So one other thing I found, it's good to change your polishing rag often. Um, and when you're cleaning off the facet, it often works better just to stroke once down or twice 
and you'll find it cleans better than moving it around because you're moving all the grease and stuff around the stone rather than just doing it in one direction. It just cleans it quicker. So once you get the buildup of all the schwarf on, on your lap, you know, it looks really dark, you can wipe it off once and, and that'll get you another couple of facets before you have to recharge. Well, I'm going to continue on and finish the uh, 50 facets I have left to go on this pavilion and then we'll see what it looks like. So finally, I'm down to the last facet. Um, it's taken quite a while. I probably have four hours into polishing this uh, 80 facets that are on this. So on the crown, I'm probably going to add an extra step and, and go to the 1200 lightning lap. I, I'm one that hates to do extra steps but in a stone with this big a facet because each one of these facets is much bigger than most of the tables that I cut on stones and tables are always the most difficult. So it's taken a long time to polish these so I'll try and get a little better pre-polish on the crown and hopefully that'll speed things up. Um, although I don't think it was excessively long for this big a stone. I mean we're talking about a stone that's over 250 carats finished um, so it's going to take a long time to polish um, so let's get to cutting this last or polishing this last facet and one thing I want to note on <clears throat> on polishing we talked about the direction of the lap and how you um, approach the stone into the lap and when we're cutting we don't cut into the lap the lap's running this direction so we don't when we're cutting cut into the lap but when I'm polishing I'm often polishing into the lap so you can check see which way goes quicker you know directional polish uh, can make a difference so on this stone I've generally been polishing in towards the lap um, except the facet we're doing now the culet I don't want to take the chance of catching the culet into the lap and damaging the culet you know, that's uh, be a, a terrible thing at this point in time. So let's polish this last facet. So let's get a charge on this first. You know, and I try to make sure that there's no chance of catching the center knob on this.
a little bit of cheating required. So I finished the final facet on this. So now I want to uh, take a look and make sure everything is polished correctly before we transfer it. And to do that, I'll take a little alcohol and wipe the stone down. Try and get all the WD-40 off it. Now one thing I found during this process, which was interesting and a revelation, is the difference between this cloth and this cloth is huge. I mean, this this took me four or five times to get the uh, surface clean. This one, as soon as I used it, I rubbed it once and the surface was clean. So there is a difference in these materials. I don't know if it's a coloring agent in it or if this is actually a mix of cotton and something else, but this will be a little research study for a future video. So the polish looks great. I'm happy with it. And now we'll transfer it and get ready to cut the crown. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And let's move on to transferring to the crown.